This VizCast is going to look at a problem involving static equilibrium. Pause the video for a moment to read the question. Now that you've read the question, you can see that we have a board here, 2.4 metres long, with some objects exerting forces on it. The assumption here, of course, is that the board is sitting still and remains sitting still, and that's why it's a static equilibrium problem. There is no acceleration of this board, and there is no angular acceleration of this board. We can begin by thinking of the forces that act on the board, and whereabouts they act. The child sitting at one end of the board pushes down with a force equal to the child's weight. The board rests on a pivot point, which will provide an upward force here that I'll call F1. At the other end of the board is a scale, and it would provide an upward force of F2. But in fact in this particular problem it's clearly stated that the scale reads 0. That means the board is not pushing on the scale, which also means the scale is not pushing on the board. So we don't need to consider a force at that end. The only other force to consider is the gravitational force pulling on the board itself. It of course acts at all points along the board, but when it comes to calculate the effect of the gravitational force on an extended object, we can consider the force to be acting through the centre of mass of the object. And if this is a uniform board, that centre of mass will be halfway along. So there are the three forces that are acting upon this board. And to be in static equilibrium, we know the sum of those forces, that's a vector sum, must be zero. Now, these forces are all acting in the vertical direction, thankfully, so it's really a one-dimensional problem as far as the forces are concerned. If we choose up to be positive, we could see that we'd have F1 minus small mg, that's the weight of the child, minus large mg, that's the weight of the board itself, must add to zero. Unfortunately, this doesn't help us calculate the mass of the board because we don't know the size of F1, the force that the pivot is pushing up with. But we also know that the sum of all torques on this board must be zero as well. Now, in principle, that's a vector equation as well, but as with many of our problems, we're only considering rotations in the plane of the page. So again, it's really a one-dimensional torque problem. These torques can either be positive or negative, or clockwise or counterclockwise torques. Of course, to calculate the torque, we need to know about what point. Remember, a force gives rise to a torque relative to some axis. And this must be true, the sum of all torques equal to zero, about any axis that we choose in this problem. Now, as we already mentioned, we don't know the size of the force F1, the pivot pushing up on the board. And in fact, that's not really an interesting quantity for us in this problem. What we're really trying to find is the mass of the board. So a useful place to put the pivot for this question is actually right there where that force F1 is acting. In that case, the torque that F1 causes about that point is zero, because that force is acting at that point. There's no distance between the force and that particular axis, so there's no torque. So the only torques we need to consider now are the torques from the weight of the child and the torque from the weight of the board. So for now, let's call this distance between the child and the pivot point D1, and let's call this distance between the board's centre of mass and the pivot, let's call that D2. And so now we can write our torque equation here, the sum of all torques. We have the weight of the child pushing down, multiplied by the distance, D1, and of course multiplied by the sine of the angle between that distance or displacement vector uh, and that weight vector. And in this case that angle is 90 degrees, which of course gives us 1. So I'll actually just remove that because multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, but we need to keep in mind that we always have to consider the sine of the angle between the displacement vector and the force vector. Now the other torque I have is the torque from the weight of the board, uh, and that's going to be acting in the opposite direction to the torque from the weight of the child. You can see the weight of the child there is going to try, the, try to drive this board in an anti-clockwise way around the pivot point. The weight of the board is going to try to drive the board in a clockwise direction. So we'll make that the opposite sign, call that minus the size of the force, times the distance, which is d2 in this case, and again multiplied by the sine of 90 degrees, which is just 1. 
and that's going to equal 0. And now I can rearrange this equation. mg d2 must equal small mg d1. And we can see that g will cancel on both sides, and I can just write down that this mass here of the board will be the mass of the child multiplied by d1 over d2. So how do I determine these values of d1 and d2? The question nicely enough tells me d1. It tells me that the pivot was 80 centimeters away from the child. So in fact d1 here will equal 0 0.8 meters. What about d2? Well I can see that d1 plus d2 gets me from one end of the board to the halfway point where the center of mass of the board is. So d1 plus d2 equals half the length of the board and that's going to be 1.2 meters because the board was 2.4 meters long and I can combine those two bits of information to find that d2 must be 0 0.4 meters. That lets me calculate the mass of the board here as the mass of the child which was 60 kilograms multiplied by d1 which is 0 0.8 meters divided by d2 0 0.4. In fact you can see the child in this case is actually twice as far away from the pivot point as the center of mass of the board. This is a factor of 2 here and I finally get the calculation that the mass of the board is 120 kilograms.